we've got a brand new update to the CSTAR app. We're looking at Android version 1.14. These are the new features in the app. We've got deep sky stacking, video stacking, built-in image editing, image adjustment in stargazing mode, improved album interaction, added zoom to solar and lunar modes, not just planetary anymore. All right, I'm gonna go through and take a look at these features, starting with zoom in the solar mode. All right, now this should be interesting because uh, the sun obviously does not have a lot of surface details to zoom in on, at least not in a telescope like the S50. Let's take a look and see what we get with the 2X. Okay, yeah, as I expected, um, it's not really adding a lot, especially right now. Um, there's not a lot, very many sunspots, which is really going to be uh, what you would get. But, you know, there are a few on the edge here you can see. And I'm going to go into the 4X zoom. And, you know, it does give a better view of the sunspots. So that is a nice feature to have. I'm not going to test out the video stack feature by recording a video of the sun about a minute long and then I'll stack it and see what it gives us. Again, just like with the zoom, I'm not really expecting a lot from the video stacking on the sun just because there are so few surface details to begin with. I have recorded the video. Now to do the video stack, I just need to go into the new my album section, and then go to uh, C Star, tab at the top, tap Solar, then select the video I took, which is 45 seconds. Once selected, just tap Video Stack at the top, and it will begin stacking. Uh, now, I will say the video stacking is not a speedy process. Um, it will take several minutes to do a video stack uh, on a video of this length. Now the stack is complete. You can see it took 436 seconds. Just need to tap, go to stack, and see the result. One thing that's interesting is that you will see that the stacked image is far less orange than the original, original video was. I'll say it Zooming in and panning around it does seem that it did improve the detail and resolution uh, on the sun, especially around the sunspots here, and some of the coloration in the sun around the sunspots. I have now pointed to Jupiter for another test of the video second feature. I've got it on 4x zoom, and I have reduced the brightness to prevent overexposure. I'll now switch over to video and tap the raw to make sure that I get a high resolution capture, which is very important for any kind of post-processing or stacking. I am now recording a one minute video. The video is finished and I will now stack it. So again, I'll go into album and the C star, open the video and tap video stack at the top. All right, the stacking has completed and I will take a look at the result. All right, you can see the stack image there. I'll zoom in for a better look. Um, it's added some detail. Um, I wouldn't say it's added a lot. For comparison, I stacked the same video in Auto Stackert, and this is the same image with the uh, auto sharpening in Auto Stackert. I will now take a look at the new image editing features. I'll go back into the C-Star album and I will select a live stacked image of NGC 281. Start with adjusting the brightness. Appears to be pretty much a straight exposure adjustment with no uh, curves or stretch or anything like that. So it's stretching the nebula and the stars and the noise all together. Let's take a look at the contrast adjustment. Start by bumping it up a bit. Okay, that is way too much. I'll dial it back and 
turn it in a little bit and you can see that it does a nice job of darkening the background and making the foreground look a lot better. Now for the saturation adjustment, it's a pretty straightforward. It will uh, increase the color saturation in all of the images. Lastly, we have a denoise feature, which is pretty nice to have built in. So let's take a look and see what it does. I will go back and bump up the brightness to introduce more noise into the image and then see, use that as a test of the denoise. Okay, um, so now I've bumped up the denoise 100% and I'm really struggling to see what's changed uh, in the image with the denoise. I was expecting a much stronger denoise effect than what we're getting with the S50 update. Now let's take a look at the live stack image enhancements using M4U2 because it is my favorite winter target. Okay, so we have three adjustments, uh, brightness, contrast, and saturation. So these are basically the same adjustments that we had in the uh, image editing feature except for the denoise. Go ahead and play with the uh, these values, however, and see if it makes an improvement with my live stack of M42. Don't want to go too crazy with the brightness or saturation. I think it is really nice to have this in the live stacking feature. Um, I think it does improve the image quite a bit, and even though the image is noisier because I increased the brightness. Um, you'll know that it is only a two minute stack so far, so that noise will be reduced with additional exposure time. Now we'll take a look at the deep sky stacking feature, where if you set the C star to save individual subs, you can now stack them in the app. So I've selected an image I took of the flame and horse head nebulas, and I'll stack them and compare the results with the live stacked image. All right, it's finished stacking and this is the stacked image that it created. It did a nice job stacking, um, no complaints. You'll see that um, the image is offset because of the field rotation as the C-star tracks uh, the nebulas. And now I'll compare it to the live stacked image. All right, I can swipe right and look at the live stacked image. And other than the fact that it's, not, it's attempted to correct for the field rotation, um, not seeing a lot of difference, to be honest, between the two stacked images might be a little more detail in the deep sky stacked image, but it is very close in detail. So based on that, I'm not sure that it's worth um, saving the individual subs and stacking using this feature. Let's take a look at the zoom feature on the lunar mode. Adjust the brightness a bit to improve the contrast. Now I'll try the 2x zoom. You can see the craters on the moon surface are coming in very nice and sharp in the 2x mode. Now I'll try the 4x zoom. In the 4x zoom, the scene conditions, uh, which is the turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere causing the shimmering effect on the moon's surface, is really apparent much more than it was in the 1x or 2x. But that is just because it is more magnified. That's not um, caused by the S50. But the 4x mode is 
The new zoom features are really nice on the moon. They really do help bring out um, the detail a lot more than the 1x zoom. I've taken a pair of roughly 30 second videos of the moon in both 2x and 4x in order to test the video stacking mode on the moon where I think it has the best chance of working really well. Now the 2x zoom video has finished stacking and I will take a look. So you can see the results are actually a lot more washed out initially than they were in the original video or the live view. I am not sure what that is, but I'll try editing the image and see um, if it can be improved. It looks like a mix of adjusting for increasing both brightness and contrast uh, is giving the uh, best improvement. I will also adjust the sharpening and see how that does. All right, the sharpening is working a lot better uh, than the denoise feature is. The sharpening is working pretty well. And I'd say that's looking pretty good. I have also stacked the video of the 1x mode, and this is the uh, result of that stack, which is a pretty nice image of the moon. And I will run through a series of similar edits to what I did with the 2x zoom uh, moon, and this is the final result, which is a pretty good improvement for a uh, quick and easy edit. Overall, I think this is a very strong update for the S50. I think it's great that they keep coming out with these really big updates, bringing in lots of new great features. I will say I was a little bit underwhelmed with the current state of some of these features, but I also realized that these are essentially first iteration features. They're laying a foundation for powerful capabilities in the S50 that CWO will continue building on and improving over time. So this is just the beginning for these features, and I'm pretty excited to see what they roll out in the future updates. I'd love to hear from you in the comments and find out what you think of this new update. Thank you for watching.